YouTube and Snapchat and Rumble and fuck, shake your tits and swing your dicks. It's another spit on your neck Fantastic Friday, which means you get another nut-busting episode of your favorite internet sensation with libation. That's right, the Friday wrap-up. Don't you just love Fridays? Before we get today's show kicked off, I want to tip my hat to today's libation. I'm drinking another Happy Dad. I just can't get enough of these things. I think they're delightful. This is a different flavor. This is the fruit, pu the fruit Punch one, which tastes just like Minute Maid Fruit Punch. I mentioned this last week, and I had to go out and get myself some. This one actually has electrolytes in it, which means you don't get dehydrated while you're drinking it. Perfect summer cocktail for being on the beach. So go out and pick yourself up a six-pack, a 12-pack, a 24-case, and have yourselves a good old time. As I to drink up and be somebody. Oh, that is just perfect. Again, like I said, it's just, it's crisp, it's refreshing. It doesn't have a lot of carbonation to it, so it's not like, you know, it's not giving you a fucking uh, infarction. It's good shit. Go get yourself some. All right, kids, what a week. Well, I'm back on uh, YouTube. My my one-week ban has been lifted. Uh, so, you know, I, I posted uh, last week's show today. So if you saw if you saw an upload earlier today, that was last week's show. This is this week's show. Uh, for those of you that are keeping track, um, I think I mentioned this last week. My Dunkin' Donuts that's been closed for like fucking three weeks just reopened, and I finally got in there this week. And I gotta say, I was I thought I was gonna be a little underwhelmed, but they really did a nice job. Now, I mean, was it worth it closed for three weeks? Not so much, but they it. They did make it look nice. It's it's a little brighter area. Uh, they set up all the ice coffees like uh, like with a tap system, like at a, like on, like on a bar. So I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't speed up the service because the problem that walk that that you have when you go in there is these fucking retards. These, these idiot customers come into there and now that now they're stunned by the new by the whole new fucking setup. They're like, ah, it's, it takes them fucking fifteen minutes to figure out what the fuck they want. Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, so Dunkin' Donuts is open again. Thank God, because I was going to burn that fucking bottle market down. I couldn't deal with these idiots over there. Jesus Christ. Uh, so what other kind of fuckery is happening this week? Oh, the board of... Check your voter cards, kids. If, if you got a voter card in the mail, uh, check the party. Because the board of elections... Somehow changed 600,000 registered Republican voters to fucking Democrat. What the fuck? Okay? What the fuck? Um, Bruce Blakeman, county executive in Nassau County, uh, also tweeted this out. And he, you know, he said that the, D the, the, the DNC was fucking informed, the Board of Elections were informed that this is erroneous. And fucking people were registered properly. And somehow, magically, everybody got switched to fucking Democrat. What They're fucking starting already. I, I told you this was going to happen. Don't give me this election misinformation bullshit, okay? This is the kind of shit that happens that makes people think the fucking elections are rigged. Or that there's some kind of fucking thing going on so, to, 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 to push Democrats ahead in fucking in, uh, in elections. Come on, you can't tell me otherwise. I mean, when shit like this happens... They are so terrified of Donald Trump that they have, they've lost their fucking scruples. It's, 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 it, it, if it wasn't so fucking insane, it would be hysterical. I'm just saying. Uh, Billy Joe, my old friend Bill, uh, he put his 26-acre mansion in the Hamptons up for sale for $49 million. So apparently him and his family have been spending a lot of time in Florida. Well, here's a fucking surprise. No state income tax. Uh, and it seems that he wants to leave New York and relocate there. Hmm, look at that. Billy Joel, who's a lifelong fucking Democrat, mind you. Okay? Uh, good. Cuomo apparently is his, is, is his godfather, uh, the godfather of one of his kids. Like, I mean, when I say he's a Democrat, he's a fucking Democrat. Okay? Uh, even he wants to get the fuck out of New York. Okay, he wants to go to Florida like everybody else. Okay, even though even though the Dems like the poo poo on Florida, that's where that's where they all want to fucking go. And he's because he's had enough of these fucking radical lunatics in New York. Okay, these radical lunatic New York Democrats that don't want to fucking do anything about crime. They just want to move migrants into your backyard and, and tell you to deal with it. You know, he's even had enough. So, yeah, you know, that should say something. 
Anyhow, well, you know what? The state should buy his fucking mansion. They could put, or the city of New York, I should say, should buy his fucking mansion, and then they could put all the migrants they want in the fucking Hamptons. Let me see how that works out for you, assholes. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I, I thought maybe when I saw this that maybe something was happening to my brain. Um, Martha Stewart. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Martha Stewart posed on the uh, Sports Illustrated Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. You, she's not, I mean, I'll say this, okay? Um, I mean, she's 80 years old. I mean, I'm not saying I want to bang a fucking 80-year-old broad. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying I'm going to take her out for a, a magical evening and, you know, take her home and violate her like a parking meter in the Bronx. I'm not saying that. But for her age, she's not a bad-looking broad. Let me tell you something. If I was 80, I mean, look at De Niro. He's melting, right? If I was 80, that would be a fucking score. You know, I'm 45, not a score. I'm just saying. But, I mean, for her age... She's put together pretty good. She looks pretty good in a fucking bathing suit for an 80-year-old broad. Okay, I'm not saying she's fucking gorgeous and I'm not panting. Like, when I saw it, I'm like... The, the only thought that popped into... I mean, we all remember the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. You'd wait for this fucking thing to come out every year. And it, it was like gold. I mean, it was there was no words in it. It was just all pictures of beautiful women in fucking bikinis. And it was marvelous. Okay? You remember when it was okay for hot women to pose in bikinis? Now you can't. Oh, God. Holy shit. First of all, fucking Miller Lite drew out a commercial the other day. I can't, they didn't learn nothing from fucking Budweiser? Some frumpy-looking fucking feminist half-lesbian fucking retard in, like, a khaki skirt that's down past. I mean, just ugly. Just walking around tearing up pictures of women in bikinis and beer commercials going, we have to have better advertising. It's that, you know, so apparently, if you're a beautiful girl, right, and you want to, like, you know, flaunt yourself in a bikini because it makes you feel pretty, that's wrong. Because the frumpy people get, you know, get body shamed. Fuck them. If you're frumpy and you're built like a fucking Mr. Potato Head, you know what? Nobody wants to see you in a bathing suit. Nobody wants to see you, period. Go home. Go hide in your basement. Fucking ridiculous. So Miller Lite is now trying it with these woke commercials. And then Adidas. Oh, I saw, I thought, I, I don't know what's happening. I really don't know what the fuck's happening anymore. Adidas has um, an advertisement with a guy in a fucking one-piece women's bathing suit. His fucking balls are hanging out of the fucking thing. He's a he's a dude, obviously, a Farouk. You, you know, he's got his hair in a bun. He's a black kid. And he's got his fucking, his nutsack is hanging out. So they're advertising women's bathing suits on men. Now look, I got no problem. You want to put a man's bathing suit on a broad. That's okay by me. You know, you know but anyhow... How is this okay? Listen, if I'm at the beach and I see a guy walking around in a fucking one piece, I, I, I think I might just rip my own goddamn eyeballs out of my fucking head. I can't, I can't, I don't know. What, what is, how, this is, this is insanity. The whole fucking world has gone crazy, okay? So, uh, honestly, an 80 year old broad on Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, not the oddest thing in the fucking room, believe it or not. So there you go. Okay, if you're whacking off the fucking pictures of Martha Stewart, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, cuz. Unbelievable. <laughs> I was in Connecticut this week. Um, I had to go up to Connecticut <laughs> for uh, for business. And um, I had to attend some, like, fundraising dinner. Story for, it was at a golf club, right? Um, it, I'm not a golfer. I, I You know, I can't... I, I look out of place at these places because, you know, you ever see people, golf people, like where they come off a golf course and they go to like some golf like dinner, like barbecue thing and they got their polo shirts and their khakis and their golf caps and their vests and stuff. Your boy don't blend. I walked in there looking like fucking Johnny Cash. Black pants, a nice merino, you know, t-shirt, the whole, yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, like, like oh, I guess you to play golf today. I'm like, sweetheart, I don't fucking play golf. I can't stand golf people, and 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 this is going to sound racist and lacrosse people because they're blanquitos, they're, they're, they're Americans. Now, I got nothing against lacrosse. It's a fucking, it's a very white, white boy kind of sport. You know, I mean, I, listen, I played lacrosse for a hot minute. I mean, I was a hockey player, and my cousin um, 
talked me into joining this PAL league out here on the island when I was a kid. I was living in Queens at the time. So for the Suwanaka Indians, <laughs> you know, back when it was okay to have a fucking, you know, Native American name for a team. So I mean I play I so I played lacrosse for like a hot minute. It didn't work out well. Um they said I was too aggressive. It's a sport where you check people. How the fuck am I too aggressive? But well, you know, when I played hockey, I would always leave my hockey stick about uh, about an inch, half inch, a little bit past my hand. So when I would check you, I would jam it into your ribs and just put you on the ice. You know, put you down. Um, so I did the same thing with my lacrosse stick. I left it about a half inch past my hand. But you know, your stick, your, your lacrosse stick is up. So. <laughs> When I used to hit people, I would jam down on their fucking ribs and actually break their lower rib and they go right down. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was always on the bench. Matter of fact, the coach, the coach's name, I don't know why I remember, it was Andy Kaufman. No relation to the to the actor, Andy Kaufman, but his name was Andy Kaufman. And he had like a pot belly, had this big fucking nose like Dustin Hoffman. And he had he was a he was like an albino. He pale skin, blonde hair, like fucking like light colored eyes, and I used to call him Latka. Because of taxi. He used to fucking hate me. That's Coach Kaufman! I'm like, all right, Latka, settle down. You know, he's just, he was always on the fucking bench. It was one game. This was actually my career-ending game. I got checked by this kid, and I hit the fucking goalie net. And I don't know what happened. But my I went one way, my shoulder went the other way, and it popped out of the socket. Like you heard it. The worst fucking injury I ever got was playing lacrosse. So when I stood up, I popped my shoulder back in. Fucking hurt like hell. I was out for like three, four games. So I told the coach I was feeling better. They put me in. Now, we, we rematched against this team. This is a big kid. He was a big motherfucker. Big white kid. Big, dumb, Irish, German, whatever the fuck. You know, again, not a lot of Italians play fucking lacrosse. It's me. And then my buddy Mikey Rubicon is probably watching this, losing his fucking mind right now. But he's a psychopath. He probably, he rips people's ears off and hangs them on his belt as a trophy. So he's not, he's not like the quintessential, like if you look up a lacrosse player, Mikey's not the fucking image you're going to find, but, and neither am I. So anyhow, we rematched against this kid, so I, I, this time I did it on purpose. I took the corner of my stick and I, I snapped his fucking rib and hit, you heard it. He hit the ground, he was rolling around screaming like a little bitch, and I leaned over and I went, next time you hit somebody, motherfucker, make sure they don't get up. Well, they, you know, they benched me, threw me out of the game for an unsportsmanlike conduct. I got kicked out of the league because I deliberately broke the kid's rib. And I don't really give a fuck. But that's my lacrosse story. So I, I, I don't like, I don't like these like waspy looking people is the point that I'm trying to make. So I had to sit there and I just kind of like, my insides were seething the entire time because they're all like, you know, glad handing each other. I know they're all fucking Democrats. So I'm, I'm the worst person in the room. My God help the first person that brings up fucking politics with me. I'm going to tear them apart. Fortunately, um, I look unapproachable. So that didn't happen. So more on Connecticut later on. Uh, okay, so the Trump indictment. Well, or well, not so much the Trump indictment, but the Trump vindication, I should say. So the Durham report came out now this uh, this week, last week. Well, last week, this week rather. So <laughs> the Durham report was uh, a special investigation done on the validity of that whole Russia Russia Gate hoax and all that shit uh, during the the first election. The you know, the, the Hillary Clinton's crew said that he was colluding with Russia and blah, blah, blah. And this haunted him for his entire presidency, right? So this fucking investigation took forever. Well, guess what? Trump was right. It was a hoax. Durham came out and said this was a, an invalid investigation based on no merits whatsoever. The FBI had no business opening this case, signing any letters saying that, that, that it was even a possible collusion. There was absolutely no evidence of anything. So basically, Trump was right. It's a hoax. This was a perpetration of a fucking lie. Never before has this ever been done to a president. It done to undermine him, and he was a he was a fantastic president in spite of this shit. Got a lot of shit done more than anybody else in spite of this. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, when are people going to jail? Who's gonna get prosecuted? Nobody. You know why? Because fucking Democrats don't go to jail. That's why. 
Okay, if it was the other way around, oh, different animal. So there you go. So if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the Durham report, basically just says, yeah, Trump was right. Russia was a hoax, which means probably everything else that the guy's saying is also correct. Okay, they 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 pulling at all the fucking stops, every goddamn dirty trick they can, like this whole fucking that Gene Carroll thing, that woman who said that he apparently raped her in a fucking uh, dressing room in Bergdorf Goodman, which. A jury found to be unlikely, so they, they knocked it down to sexual misconduct or whatever, which could be a slap on the ass, you know, and like I said last week, the whole reason why that came out, and it came out during uh, when Trump was running for president the first time against Hillary Clinton is because Eugene Carroll is friends with the fucking Clintons. I mean, listen, if anybody should know a rapist, that should be Hillary Clinton. She's married to one, hmm. but nobody likes to say that. Anyway, on uh, 52 farts, let's let her rip. Okay, so put the old spectacles on here off the top of the deck. We have the Never Ender, okay, which is an evacuation of gas from the anus accompanied by a deep rumbling sound that continues for any prolonged period of time, like the long tail or like the fart that just won't end. Like you get like a little... <laughs> It just keeps going, you know? You can get like a little little extra blast out of there. It's what happened to all of us. Life happens a lot to old people. Okay, kids, get your tickets out. We're about to hop on to that maniacal, magical express into mayhem and fuckery. The crazy train's about to leave the station. Oh, but Woo-hoo! First stop, New York City. All right, our friend Mayor Motherfucker at it again. He's putting illegals now in school gyms. So, this is what happens when you open your big fucking lips, okay? And you go, oh, we're, we're a sanctuary city. We go, we don't take all the migrants because we don't think they're going to actually come. And then fucking Abbott sends them up there. Oh, they, they're playing politics with these motherfuckers. Where the fuck are we going to put all these motherfuckers? That's, that's what's happening right now. So now... They decided to put these, to house them in the gymnasiums of public schools in the city. Do I even really need to tell you why this is just unbelievably fucking dumb? You don't know what the, because these, none of these people are fucking vetted, so you don't know what the fuck is going to, you could be putting fucking ch pedophiles in a goddamn kid's school. And of course, now the kids can't have gym, right? So it's bad enough they've been sequestered at home for a fucking year and a half. Now that they finally get to school, now they can't be, they can't be active. And on the opposite side of that, they want to ban chocolate uh, chocolate milk in the fucking schools because they're saying that chocolate milk makes kids fat. No. You know what makes kids fat? Lack of exercise. Like taking away their gym and turning it into a fucking tenement city. Okay? You fucking retard. So now people are protesting who probably voted Democrat. They want their fucking kids' gym back because, I mean, the gym also serves other social functions like dances and things. Graduations and shit like that. This is ridiculously stupid, okay? Um, he had homeless veterans thrown out of a fucking hotel or motel in Yonkers to house these fucking illegals. Homeless veterans, people who fought for this country, got injured, got a little mentally fucking irregular, okay? For whatever reason, they're homeless. And like I said, and I've, so, and I've told you this, if I'm going to help anyone who's homeless, vets only. Anybody else I can really give a fuck, up, a fuck about, seriously. So he had them ejected so that they could put illegals in a hotel. Now he's getting all kinds of backlash. Going, oh, I didn't know. They didn't tell me. They don't tell me shit. You know, yeah. Okay. Fucking retard. And he wants to ship them now. And I told you they were going to come to the island. He wants to send them to Riverhead, which is like, you know, uh, methadone, <laughs> methadone addict Disneyland. Like, I mean, there's a lot of fucking junkies walking around Riverhead. You got the fucking prison right there. I mean, and honestly, they're really trying to clean up that downtown area. Uh, you know, they, they went through this whole beautification project. They're trying to attract businesses. It's right along the river there. So, I mean, it, it, it could be a nice area if it's done right. You know, it used to be a very, a highly Polish area. All the, all the fucking Polacks left. They're not that stupid. They're, I'm not staying here. So, you know, 
They're trying to get some of that culture back downtown. And here comes this fucking mush mouth now. He wants to go send a bunch of Mexican illegals. Okay? Unvetted criminals, drug addicts, drug dealers, all kinds of better, all kinds of bullshit. Listen, like, like we're not getting the cream of the cream over here, okay? You, th th there's nothing good coming out of these fucking countries. And it's not just Mexico, it's Honduras, uh, Ecuador, uh, Haiti, whatever the fuck. You know, the regular people, the normal people, take, you know, normal fucking means to immigrate here. What we're getting are the dregs of humanity. I'm sorry if you don't like that. I'm sorry if that somehow offended you. If it does, go fuck yourself because I'm right. Okay? Point being is, if you want to come to this country, no problem. Do it the right way. Oh, you don't have the money? Work for it. My grandparents did it. You know? I mean, they didn't come from fucking money. They hustled, they did what they had to do, they came over here on a fucking boat, they quarantined, they did what they had to do, and that's it. They became productive members of society. These cocksuckers come here because they know they're going to get everything on the fucking arm. Our dollar, but on the fucking arm, okay? So, don't tell me I'm fucking being racist. Fuck you if you think I'm racist. If I'm racist, I'm racist. What do you want me to tell you? I hate everyone equally. So, now he wants to send them to uh, Riverhead. And, and the town supervisor for Riverhead is threatening legal action against anyone who cuts a deal with New York City. So, any kind of hotel, motel, uh, housing facility, nonprofit organization, whatever the fuck is over there that cuts a deal with New York City to house these migrants, the mayor's going to take, uh, the, the, um, the mayor's going to take, uh, I'm sorry, the town supervisor is going to take legal action. This mayor is fucking retarded. Yeah, that, that's the bottom line. If he would have just kept his big, stupid fucking mouth shut, he wouldn't have this issue. All right? Next stop, Pennsylvania. So a 67-year-old Pennsylvania man by the name of Roger Young, who is the owner and proprietor of Young's Pest Control in Hastings, Pennsylvania. Apparently, Roger had a bad day and was just plain sick of people. Hell, we can all sympathize with that, right? I mean, Lord knows I can. <laughs> Uh, I was sick of people fucking 44 years ago. Um, well, apparently Roger hit his breaking point the other day and found a unique way of dealing with it. He pissed all over a customer's apartment. So he went there to, like, I guess do some extermination work. I don't know what triggered him. Maybe, maybe they voted for Biden. I don't know. But the guy just snapped, pulled out his fucking wang and just started pissing all over the fucking apartment. On the carpet, on the couch, the kids' toys. He pissed on a cat. <laughs> and this was all caught on one of those like little ring cam surveillance things that they have in the house. Serious fucking just holding the place down. And they probably gave them a bill for extermination services. <laughs> <laughs> so when he was arrested <laughs> again another brilliant thing to get locked up for um the cops asked him why he or somebody asked him why he did that and his response was he had a bad day and he was just sick of people <laughs> well you know i mean listen that's one way to fumigate i mean <laughs> i guess what you know when you hear pest control you automatically think bugs, right? Well, apparently the pests that Roger is trying to exterminate is stupid people. Good luck with that, Roger. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Next stop, Birds Beach, Australia. So, some entitled vegan cunt left a letter for her neighbor asking them to close their windows when they're cooking any kind of meat because her and her family are a bunch of deranged vegans, and apparently the smell of meat offends them. <laughs> she left this fucking letter. <laughs> and it said, please take seriously. Because <laughs> as she's writing it, she has to know that this is beyond fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Who the fuck... You're in your own home, minding your business, cooking a fucking steak or grilling something in the backyard. This asshole chose to live this idiotic fucking lifestyle and and, 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 and leaves you a letter saying, could you please close your windows? Are you fucking kidding me? This entitled piece of shit should only live next to me. 
I would slaughter a cow every fucking week in my backyard naked and then paint my body in the cow's blood and then smear myself against the outside of the fence so they can see the skid mark, okay? And then as I'm grilling the fucking cow, I would take the, ho the, the, the head and the hooves and mount them on spikes and dance around a fire like a wild Indian singing show tunes in German. fucking retarded people. What's wrong with the people in Australia? The, the, the sun too strong? God almighty. Next stop, the UN, United Nations Agricultural Organization. Big, big, big stop. So they've just concluded an extensive study over there, which states that being a vegan is extremely unhealthy. <laughs> so I'm not making this up. Science, right? Follow science? The study concludes that meat, eggs, and dairy provide vital and essential nutrients and proteins that you cannot get in a plant-based diet. Well, here's my surprised face. Okay? That's why these fucking people all look like heroin addicts. Okay? And, 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 and they vote, they're walking around like Democrats, and they're voting... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> walking around like fucking zombies and voting Democrat because they're all malfunctioning from lack of vital proteins and nutrients. Okay? So in other words, stop it. Veganism is fucking stupid. You're all unhealthy and you're going to die. So eat a cheeseburger and shut the fuck up. Okay? Salute. All right, kids, your sports update. So, Major League Baseball. The now, I think, second to last place Yankees. Uh, play the Reds tonight at 640. You know what? I, they, I gotta say this. They did play, they did play pretty well, uh, last weekend. Friday and Saturday, I mean, I thought those fucking games were done and done. And they came out of nowhere, well, thanks to Judgy, really, but they came out of nowhere and fucking battled back and beat, uh, uh, won those games. So I have to, I gotta tip my hat to that. Gotta tip my hat to that. And even last night, a game against Toronto... They, they fucking wiped them out, too. That was a good game. So, Mets play uh, the formerly racist team called the, you know, that was known as the Cleveland Indians. They changed their name to the Guardians now, and they're not racist anymore. Although they've been the fucking Cleveland Indians since 1946, and nobody gave a shit. But they're playing the Indians, Guardians, whatever the fuck you want to call them tonight at 710. Uh, Phil's play the Cubs tonight at 705. NHL, uh, who do we got left? We got the uh, Hurricanes and the Panthers. And you have the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. And honestly, I could really give a fuck who wins or loses. If they all died in a plane crash tomorrow, I don't really think I'd give a fuck. NBA, another thing I don't give a shit about. The NBA championships, Knicks got bounced last Friday, so I don't give a shit no more. I could care less who wins, who's in it, who's not in it. Um... That was heartbreaking, really. You know, I really thought they had a shot there. I did. I mean, they didn't lose by much. It was a couple of points, and it was just stupid shit. You know, again, missing free throws. I think they lost by like three or four points, but that, if they would have hit, took, if they would have hit all their fucking free throws, they would have lost. You know, not playing good defense. You're letting Miami shoot from the fucking paint, hitting three-pointers left and right. But even still, if you'd have just managed your fucking free throws, how hard is it? You're a professional NBA player. Hit the bucket. You're not even moving. You're standing still. I can hit a free throw. Okay? I, there's no excuse. Professional basketball player missing free throws. No excuse. Um, and just some, like I said, just, this is just some bad decisions. There was a lot of turnovers. It just wasn't good. But, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. It was a good season, you know. I, if you'd have told me in the beginning of the season that the fucking Knicks would have been in the playoffs, I would have laughed at you. I also said the same thing about the Nets, but the Nets the Nets didn't even get their fucking feet off the ground. How the hell they even made it in the, in the first place, I don't know. But the Sixers did, you know, knock them out in four games. So... Or three games, or whatever the fuck it was. But anyway, so that's it. So now we're just we're stuck with baseball until until football season starts back up again. Okay, kids, on Tommy's Pub and Grub Review. So, like I said, I was in Connecticut this week. And um, you know me, I love my sandwiches. You know, and I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of like. 
these franchise sandwich places or like these, you know, hero shops and stuff like that that are franchise. But I have, there are some exceptions. Like, of course, Primo's, right? You've heard me mention Primo's and Phil, they're Philly based. They're local. You know, they're, 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 they're a family owned company. They're local. You really only see them throughout the Pennsylvania region. Some, some spots in South Jersey. Like, I think they have a location in Lawrenceville and one down in Cape May. Don't ask me why I know these things, but I do. Okay, Primo's is one of my favorites. And I've been hearing some good things about Jersey Mike's. Um, I haven't tried it. They're based out of South Jersey. Um, but I promise you I'll do a review on that. But this particular one is called uh, Nardelli's Grinders in Farmington, Connecticut. Now, Grinder is Connecticut for hero sandwich. You know, everywhere you go, they call a fucking hero something different. In, in PA, it's hoagie. South Jersey, it's hoagie. You know, um... I think North Jersey, some places call them heroes, some places call them subs. New York, it's hero. You go other places, it's sub shop, you know, it's a sub shop, whatever the fuck. It's all the same thing. It's all good. So there's this place in Connecticut, and it was established, the backstory on this joint, it was established in Waterbury in 1922 by two, uh, by three Italian immigrants. They were brothers, the North Delhi brothers. They came over here, they opened up a little grocery store. And they started selling sandwiches, and that was a hit. And they took it from there, and boom, there you go. It's local. It's a, it, they they have locations all throughout Connecticut, um, and it's family owned, family operated. And you could tell by the way the place is run, the freshness of the ingredients, and all that other stuff. So I've seen signs for this all up and down the highway for Nardellis, right? And it's for years, for years, and I never bothered to stop there. Um, this one in Farmington, I think might be new. So I'm in Farmington Wednesday. So I had a meeting, I finished up, and I was a little hungry, I had some time to kill. And there was a Nardelli's happening down the road. I was just going down the, going down the road and I found this, ah, you know what? Let me stop and check this joint out. I love sandwich places. So I'm looking at the menu and it's pretty fucking interesting. So here's the here's the here's the trick. Now, first of all, I obviously I love the place because I wouldn't be mentioning it. It was I, I was blown away. I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to be that good. So I started with the Italian combo. Now, here's the trick with their sandwiches. They have this like you know you, everybody puts like the lettuce, the tomatoes, and the onions, and the oil and vinegar and that stuff. And pretty much how I love to have a sandwich minus the lettuce because I can't eat it. Well, they go one step further than that. So, like, if you ordered, like, everything on your sandwich, it would come with mayo, which I don't put mayo on an Italian hero. That's an infomnia. But I told them to use oil and vinegar, leave the mayo off. Lettuce, tomato, so no lettuce. And then they have what's called the mix. I said, what's that? They said, oh, it's like a, it's like almost like a jardinera. You know, it's just a, it's a mix of vegetables. It's a proprietary thing, and we, we marinate it in oil and vinegar and spices. I said, well... So basically, it's peppers, onions, and cucumbers. So here's what they do to the sandwich, right? So you can get the lettuce and the tomato shit. Then they add this mix, which is like pickled vegetables. It's just, you know, let it's a cucumber, bell pepper, onion that they just marinate in olive oil and red wine vinegar and some Italian seasonings. Then they add olives and hot sauce. That's on top. So they have black olives sliced. They add that. And then their own proprietary hot sauce, which is a vinegar-based sauce, it's not over. It's not mind-blowingly hot. It's not obnoxious. It's just enough to let you know that it's there. It just gives the sandwich a little bit of heat, but not like boom, well, you don't taste anything. Well, the combination of everything of that with the oil and the vinegar and the fucking cold cuts and the Italian combo, very simple provolone, prosciutto, salami, gabagol, that type of shit. With this, I was fucking not the fuck out. The vegetables were the kicker because it just. That little crunch, and it bites through the unctuousness of the cold cuts. I couldn't fucking stop thinking about this. And they make their own bread. Now, I'll say this. This is this place was fucking unbelievable. Was not as good as Primo's. So I, I haven't jumped the Primo's ship yet. I and mean, I don't foresee myself doing that any time in the near future. And here's where Primo's gets them. First of all, Primo's stuffs their sandwich more. Because they're using a smaller... A smaller loaf of bread. So they might be using about the same. I mean, I don't know. Every time I got a Primo sandwich, maybe because I knew the guy. I mean, it was like it, it was like the size of a baby. They're using a wider bread. They make their own, but it's not really like Primo's bread is almost like it really is an Italian bread. Seeded. 
It's got the same consistency as a, of Italian bread. They bake it on premises, all of that stuff. Matter of fact, when I lived in PA, the only place I would buy bread was from Primo's. I would go over there and say, to the other, Al, come on, give me like two, three loaves of bread. Ah, he's like, all right, Tommy. I was like, how much are you? He's like, I don't know, give me a, give me $3. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, $5. Give me the goddamn bread. Because they were like that. But anyhow. So, Primo's gets them on size. Because the sandwiches were like, you got a whole sandwich. Like I said, you, you're getting like fucking four pounds of cold cuts. Because a whole sandwich was like the length of my arm. No kidding. Okay? The bread was ten times better. But now, if you added this mix onto that, forget about it. It would be unbelievable. But so... I'll say Primo's does beat out Nardelli's, but Nardelli's was fucking great. The, the kicker was that that mix. Now, like I said, the bread wasn't bad. It's a little softer than I would like. It, it, it has almost the same texture as Portuguese bread, which sort of makes sense because there's a lot of uh, Portuguese influence um, in the New England cuisine because you got a lot of Portuguese that, used to, that came in there. So uh, I'm not shocked by that, but... Like I said, I mean, it's a wide, it's a wide loaf. It's, I mean, like fucking sandwiches. If you got a whole sandwich, it's big. You're not finishing this thing. So, I, so I had my lunch. And I couldn't stop thinking about. It. I like. I thought it was so nice. I went twice. So the next day, I'm leaving uh, Connecticut, and it was like eleven o'clock. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm gonna stop for lunch. I walk in again. They're like. Oh my God, you're back? I'm like, yeah. She says, I couldn't stop thinking of the joint. So when I judge a sandwich place, I do it based on two things. Their Italian combo and their chicken cutlet hero. You know me, I love my chicken cutlets. I'm not a chicken fan, but I do like a nice chicken cutlet. So, and they had them. I said, give me the chicken cutlet grinder. Again, with everything but lettuce. So this time I had mayo. I had the mix. I had the olives, the hot sauce. The tomato, the whole nine, right? Now, the chicken with the mayo and that mix. Oh, God, they definitely onto something. It was just fucking marvelous. So good that when I was done, I ordered a whole chicken cutlet and prosciutto grinder to take home for lunch today and for tomorrow. So I had three different fucking sandwiches from this place in two days. Take a look. I mean, but you see these sandwiches. They look beautiful, don't they? And like I said, I can't get enough for that fucking mix. I'm going to have to try to mimic that. It's almost like a Jardinera. You know, like, they have that. Chicago has a Jardinera. You know, like, it kind of reminded me of, like, a muffalata. In, uh, in New Orleans, they have the their Italian heroes. The muffalata has that olive salad. It's like an olive and Jardinera salad, and they put on it on top of the sandwich. <sighs> Which is just fucking unbelievable, too. So, you know, I mean, you know me. If I can find a good sandwich shop, I'm going to check it out. So if you're in the Connecticut area, and I'm always there. I've been kicking myself for not going to this place sooner, but you bet your ass I'll be going there a lot more. If you're in the Connecticut area, go check out Nardelli's Grinders. They have a bunch of them throughout the Connecticut area. Go to their website, Nardelli's.com, uh, and it'll tell you all the locations. Trust me. You'll thank me. Tell him Uncle Tommy sent you. Okay. On what the fuck is that? We're going to talk about PP cloths. So, I didn't know that this was a necessary product. I guess it's for hikers and campers. Okay? You know, and it's mainly geared towards women because guys really don't have a need for this. Like if It's for the outdoor peer. That's how they market it. Like, if you're pissing outdoors. Like, I mean, if you're regularly pissing outdoors, you're either homeless or you're a fucking savage. Okay, I mean, like I said, probably for, like, hikers and things like that. Like, a guy, you whip it out, you take a squirt, give it two shakes, it's fine. It's good to go. Women gotta, you know, they gotta wipe it up a little bit. So, this is a cloth that's designed to be carried outside of your backpack. You fold it up. The inside has this antimicrobial kind of antibacterial. So you basically take this cloth off your backpack, you wipe, you snatch, you fold it back in half, you hook it back on. And the, the sun is supposed to sterilize it and dry it. So you're walking around with a PP damp rag hanging from the back of your backpack, you savage, sick son of a bitch. Just bring some biodegradable fucking toilet paper with you. I mean, paper, toilet paper is all natural anyway. It's not going to pollute the ground. It's going to fucking disintegrate. I, I mean, I don't understand. What is happening? 
It's carry your own fucking road or just don't go hiking. And people wonder why they got killed. Okay, uh, and right a racist. In 2015, uh, surveys concluded that black people are comparatively the worst tippers. And that's been reported by the Washington Post, so you know it's accurate. Well, that's right! I, you thought I was going to say it was racist. <laughs> yeah, no. 34% uh, of black tippers were considered very bad. Um... <laughs> They were considered very bad tippers, while other, well, another 36% were labeled below average. Uh, conversely, 98% of white people were rated as average or above. Now, I can contest to this personally, being in the service business most of my life, that is a thousand percent fucking accurate. I don't want to hear no white privilege shit, okay? Actually, the broker, the white person, the better the tip. Right, so, <laughs> don't be cheapskates, people. Okay, for your PSA, let's talk about these fucking eyelashes. These fake eyelashes that people are gluing to. It's getting to the point where it's just ridiculous now. It's obnoxious, okay? I know I've said it, I know I've expressed my, my displeasure, but it's just fucking stupid. Uh, you look like what a, a walking Cupid doll. Like, remember those dolls that you, you'd lay in back, their eyes were like possessed and they would like shut closed and they'd go, Mama? That's what you fucking look like. I was in Dunkin' Donuts the other day, I see this girl, black girl, young girl, and she, her fucking eyelash, I, all, from her side profile, all I saw were these, it looked like feather dusties. I was so tempted to ask her if she could dust something for me. Just go like that and dust. You look, they're so long you can't even wear fucking sunglasses. This does not look attractive. And I promise you, no guy, no fucking heterosexual man has ever looked at a woman and went, Holy shit, look at her fucking eyelashes. Aren't they wonderful? No, they're not looking at your fucking eyelashes, princess. They're looking at your tits, your ass, your face, everything else. We could care less if you even have fucking eyelashes. Okay? These things look stupid. First of all, they got to get in the way of shit. Okay? They're going to fall off while you're fucking. If you're doing anything else, they're going to get stuck to things. And that's not, you're going to have one eyelash now. You're going you're gonna to look fucking retarded. Okay? Stop it with the eyelashes. You look dumb. Guys do not like women that have detachable things on them. Okay, if I have to start picking shit off of you, you're missing the point of being pretty. Okay, just saying. If you need to glue shit onto your face in order for you to be pretty, you're fucking ugly, deal with it. Anyway, Stay covid list, kids. No masks, don't ask, haters can kiss my ass. And remember, who loves you, babe? It's been your Friday wrap-up, and I'll see you when I see you.